one of our favorite topics when we, we get together periodically is to talk about what the future of treasury and financial risk management might look like. I, I think the future is, um, the future is uh, two big themes, uh -huh. um, uh, uh, data and integration. Um, okay. Uh, data, uh, it is so hard for companies to, to get their arms uh, around their FX data, for, for example. Um, it is... Uh, it is a meaningful challenge uh, for companies going through that process. But the value of getting to the other side uh, is tremendous. And the value is not just tremendous because of uh, because now you can hedge your FX risk better, uh, but the value is tremendous because you can actually make even better capital markets uh, decisions than you could otherwise. And I'll give you an example okay. um, uh, of this. Um, we have a client, uh, multi, large multinational. They, uh, you know, this was a little earlier this year, um, they were constantly getting pitched uh, by their banks that, oh, you should do some Euro debt because it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. um, which on the face of it makes sense. Um, what their banks didn't know, and, and the company didn't want to tell them, but we knew because they had uh, leveraged Chatham Direct, our, our technology platform, uh -huh. uh, and, and the company knew is that they actually weren't long Euro, they were short Euro. So, so issuing Euro debt okay. would just exacerbate a problem that already existed. Um, interestingly, though, they're very long yen, um, and right now, maybe they can't do a natural issuance in, in yen, mm -hmm. uh, but they certainly could do a cross-currency swap, uh, uh -huh. and that has huge savings, at least in the current environment, mm -hmm. um, to swap to yen. Uh, but that's actually an example where they did the work to get the data, yeah. um, leveraging a platform that moved them from uh, you know, process uh, into being able to make more strategic decisions, and combining that data with uh, and integrating it with their capital market strategy allowed them to make a very different decision that they would have made had they n had they let them sit in separate silos and the two you know, never the two shall meet. Um, and I think that story is an example of, of where we're headed. Of you know, the tools that are out there um, that people can rest in are going to make it easier to get access to data, to mm -hmm. interpret data, uh, to make real decisions uh, on that data in that particular area. Yeah. But then it's actually going to go beyond. Uh, and, and the most forward-looking treasurers and treasury teams are, are going well beyond just uh, letting data sit within silos and going, you know, not even into capital markets, but even into the business to mm -hmm. inform yeah. the decisions that are made strategically uh, within the business. And the, the tools that are out there are all going to help enable this. If, uh, if, yeah, no, if you can make a, that AI that included, because yeah. yes. they, they have to tap in the data too. A exactly. Uh, it, so, um, so I'm really excited because I, I think um, you know the days of going to a. I, I had a conversation with the treasurer not that long ago. Or, uh, we were talking about commodity prices. He said, "Well, how much do you spend on on fuel for your distribution?" He's like, "The funny thing is, I have no idea." Like, uh, <laughs> I said, "Well, who in the company knows?" Nobody. I've tried to figure out who uh -huh. knows and who's projecting, but FPNA has one set of data. Yeah. You know, our um, you know our supply chain um, teams have another set. Like everyone has this different data, uh, and you know he's sitting there thinking, how how do I navigate this? Um, but but those as soon as we can use the technologies that are out there to resolve those challenges and bring it into uh, more of an integrated strategy, uh, it's going to have a huge impact on, on treasury and capital markets.